Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Uh, thank you, thank you for taking the time to join us today. And uh, the focus that we're going to be discussing is going to be about intelligent and digital energy management for energy service companies, or ESCOs, in short. Okay. Sophia, can we go to the next slide, please? Just to briefly show you guys the agenda for today. Okay. So we're going to be firstly going to uh, the welcome, the introduction, which is happening right now. Then we will dive into the energy service companies information secondary okay after that we will go into the digitalization of services and uh, followed by optimization of processes which is going to be covered by sophia and uh, finally if we have the time we'll try and answer a couple of questions at the end okay so feel free to post any questions at whichever point during the webinar and we'll try to answer them if not today we will get those uh, answered to you guys within the next 24, 48 hours through email or uh, we'll get in contact with you, okay? A quick introduction, okay? So Sophia, is, uh, she's a project manager here at Dexma. And uh, Sophia, if you can introduce yourself quickly. Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sophia and as Carlos said, I'm Dexma Platform Product Manager, which means everything that is kind of transversal to the Dexma tree products. And that's it. Perfect. Thank you, Sophia. And just to give you guys a quick intro as well, uh, I'm the account executive here, mainly focused on the key accounts, which are UK and Ireland. And uh, of course, uh, I do take part in Canada and US as well. Basically, any English uh, English speaking uh, clients that I can deal with, I will I will help out with. So any new business. Uh, you guys will get in contact with me. You have the email information right there. And at the end of the webinar, uh, there will also be a phone number as well that you can uh, reach out to, okay? Uh, Sophia, next slide, please. Thank you. So the time right now is crucial, okay? The way things are going around the world. And uh, of course, we are amidst the cl climate change and the climate crisis. And uh, all of this has an effect uh, on, on our system and of course, our environment. So our goal here at Dexma and a mutual core driver that we, we find is to help the world by, by helping companies become more sustainable, okay? So there are many factors affecting these changes, okay, in prices and uh, utilities and with energy, with utilities, whichever. A big one right now that we all notice, of course, is the war that's going on in Ukraine, okay? But it's not the only factor, okay? So, of course, in the UK, the energy price cap has increased by 12% in October last year, 2021 and is expected to increase by 54% right now in April of this year, uh, with, of course, increases happening again later in the year. So it's uh, it's quite a big change, okay? And, of course, the historic plunge in global uh, energy consumptions in the early months of the COVID crisis last year drove the prices of many of these fuels uh, to their lowest levels in, in, in decades. But since then, uh, of course, we've rebounded strongly and mainly as a result of an exceptionally rapid global economic recovery, we are seeing um, increases in prices over the last few months, and uh, a, a lot of those have been reaching some uh, some historical maximums. Okay, the International Energy Organization and other institutes forecast that the volatility of these prices will continue to rise over the next months and potentially even further. So we really don't know. The repercussion and it could be it could be quite uh, quite a lot of increases but it is nonetheless a quite uh, unique moment in the history of the world uh, which makes us of course uh, here on our side work even harder uh, for our mission right and for those of you who don't know uh, this is our mission statement and uh, we're basically here to help any person that wants to take action into building a more sustainable world right so we believe that sustainability uh, that a sustainable future is going to be uh, achieved through all digital means that we have at our disposal and we're of course continuously uh, building uh, building building that even further over the next years to come okay uh, this is just some statistics from from our company it's just some data right so uh, you can see we're serving more than 4,000 different organizations in more than 30 countries and uh, we're collecting approximately half a million of, uh, of readings every 15 minutes. Okay, next slide, please. So what is an ESCO? Uh, next one, please. So what is an ESCO? Uh, ESCOs are basically companies that develop 
and install and uh, finance projects that aim to improve energy efficiency and installation maintenance costs. Okay, it's implicit in this definition that payment of the services provided will be based in part or in full on the achievement of energy efficiency improvements. Still, we found that uh, there are other types of companies like maintenance or purely like installation companies or companies that offer uh, specifically towards like self-consumption projects um, or they're focusing on um, or oriented just towards energy management, right? So the definition does vary and there's a lot of uh, company styles or models that fit into the ESCO description. but. Uh, so we see here, uh, ESCOs are basically for our for ourselves, our representation of the term or the terminology. Uh, that uh, basically ESCOs have the same goal in common, which is to provide energy efficiency to their clients. Okay, so any anytime we refer to ESCOs from from now on in the webinar, this is what we mean. Okay. Next slide, please. Perfect. So here are some of the examples and types of contracts typically found with energy service companies. Okay, so uh, as you can see, there's energy performance contracting, which we'll, we'll go through an example a little bit later, energy supply contracting and the 5P mo 5Ps model for, for the public sector, which is mostly used. Of course, there are other models that we can find, and there are new ones arriving in the market uh, all of the time, so it is ever-changing. And uh, all the service, all the energy service companies, despite their service model, of course, they need tools and a platform that help them do their services, ideally offering scalability and adaptability to the market, right? The main purpose of the ESCOs is focused in, uh, in, in four different things, all right? So the demand side is trying to make a process, installation or building uh, need less energy to obtain their goals. So basically become more energy efficient. Uh, let that be through whichever reader, you know, better insulation, better process definition and so on. The optimization basically also optimize energy providers, which is the point number two there in the main, main actions to take. This is to try to get high quality uh, and renewable if possible energy. Okay. Uh, point number three, which is load shifting, basically here uh, try to help ESCOs and their customers to shift the energy consumption to the periods of day, weeks, months, or even years uh, when it is better for them in terms of cost, quality, and security. And point number four there, uh, energy efficiency and conservation program. So here, let's detect the energy efficiency measures and we basically help uh, ESCO's uh, customers to invest in them. So this is the EPC model that uh, I was mentioning. So you, as you can see here on the, on the graph, it's fairly standard. Uh, it's just a description of the evol evolution of an EPC contract to give you guys an example. So. Initially, the end customer has uh, a cost, right? That, uh, that they have associated, whatever that cost may be. And uh, the ESCO makes an investment, okay? And in improving the installation uh, with regards to their energy consumption, right? So uh, included uh, in this, of course, are the savings, uh, which you can see outlined in the top right corner, right? So the green and the blue section there. So in the blue are the actual uh, savings, both energetic, but more uh, specifically, monetary that ESCOs obtain, to which they will use a portion to cover their costs of implementation uh, for the customer or installations or assessment, whatever is necessary to get the project done. And the part that is just in green represents the savings that go directly to the to the end, end customer, All right? So as you can see there, since the first moment after implementation, the customer can have savings even even uh, in the early stages and once the contract period ends, those savings uh, that were captured by the ESCO are going to be basically 100% transferred to the customer. So uh, it, this increases the total amount of savings the customer has over the complete period, all right? Uh, at the end, not only the savings, but also the, 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 the client also gets, uh, of course, renewed installations, the correctly correctly uh, managed and maintained uh, systems and so on. So the cost benefits uh, to the end customer are quite good even after um, the, the termination period with uh, for the contract. Uh, typically speaking, uh, sorry, can you go back to the previous slide? Thank you. So typically speaking, uh, you know, these contracts can last seven, eight, 12 years uh, and so on after completion. But, uh, you know, at the end, the customer will reap these re rewards for quite some time. So like even even 
for the same amount of time that they were in the in the contract period. So if they were seven years in the contract, they can still reap benefits for the same amount of time afterwards. So quite a long period. Okay, so this is just an example of the typical business model, but of course there has been changes as I mentioned, and you know there's been innovations over the years. So this is ever evolving. Next slide, please, Sophia. Thank you. Uh, this is just a little global market overview. Okay, so to give you guys context, um, the the global ESCO market grew eight percent, uh, which was twenty eight point six billion in two, 2017. Okay, this is the last data that we could find from the International Energy Agency. China uh, is one of the main drivers in this sector right now. Uh, and also US has been growing in a continuous matter in the last few years, as you can see there. Uh, in Europe, it seems to be uh, a little bit underdeveloped compared to the rest of the market, but still we're representing 10% of the global market. So there's a lot of more room for improvement. And this is where the chance lies. Thank you, Sophia. And then the, these slides here, uh, we basically see uh, how the market's been evolving in all the countries. I think Sweden has been slightly decreasing, but uh, you know, in countries like Denmark, uh, Belgium, Italy, et cetera, you can see there on the screen, uh, it's, been, it's been going at a steady rate or growing at a steady rate as well as uh, UK and Spain, of course, as well. Okay, thank you, Carvo. So now that uh, Carvo has has explained to us what a Nesco is, uh, how is the, their business model, and how the market uh, looks like at the at the moment, I'm going to to try to explain to you how EMSs, just like uh, Dexma, uh, try to help uh, Escos to provide a, an excellent service to their to their customers, and try, of course, to 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 help them escalate and uh, reach as many customers as possible, right? So uh, here we have uh, a very simplified diagram of what uh, an ESCO project phases look like. Uh, of course, there might be many versions of this. This is an example in the standard case. Um, so we'll start by the analysis which means that we are collecting the data from the customer without data it is not possible to to continue any further it is the the first step then we go to concept where uh, energy managers decide with which kind of um, of measures they, they would like to implement uh, for this customer and uh, very important they define the, the baseline for the building uh, that that is going to that is it is what is going to to allow uh, to allow the the ESCO to see uh, how much the client is saving once the the measures are implemented. We go up to the implementation implementation phase, of course, and at last the service and operation phase uh, until the the period of the contract is over. So for each of these phases. Uh, EMSs can help uh, with the specific functionalities. Uh, we are going to go into detail uh, during the next slides. Just to put together the, the graph that Carvo uh, showed to you just before, where you, show, you see the savings and the costs that the customer and the, and the ESCO has. Uh, the, the phases that I was just showing to you in the previous slides uh, would fit like this into the the cost diagram. Uh, start by analysing concept. Just by the end of implementation, we start to have savings, and most of the of the savings go into the service uh, portion of the time. Okay, so let's start going into the detail of each of the phases of the of the project. You can check the phases phases and at uh, which one we are explaining right uh, at the moment over uh, at the bottom of the screen. We start by, of course, collecting, collecting the data, as I was telling you before. And uh, um, it's very important that the, the EMS has a large portfolio of native integrations that you just install the hardware, you go to the to Dexma and um, start receiving data at the moment. Uh, Dexma has a large variety of native integrations ready for you to start using. 
if you want to to build your own connection because you have your own data lake or there is some new, new hardware that you want to integrate you can do it by yourself or you can even hire uh, a third party company to do the integration because Dexma has a public API that allows you to do just this. Uh, you by yourself can make your integration if necessary. And then if you want to do more complex things like create uh, virtual devices, putting together data from several physical devices, applying a formula, you can also do this uh, in a very easy, easy way inside the platform. So. Now that we have the data in the platform, we can start showing actual information to the customer, right? This is what the, the customer expects to see. And in Dexma, we are really proud to, to present, uh, to have presented at the beginning of the year or end of last year, new dashboards that are just like the ones that you see here on the, on the screen. Okay. And then... Um, we're having right now available uh, dashboards just like the ones that you are seeing here, but we want to keep improving these dashboards, giving more functionality over this year and years to come, probably. Uh, we really think that this is a key point to have some really visually engaging uh, ways of showing data that you, any customer can understand. Uh, and uh, here we can see how, how they are set up, really easy. Other ways of showing data, uh, like with a diagram or showing it over a picture of the actual building, having like a map where you can see them, the, the installations placed in the map and ranked, uh, and many other ways of representing and customizing even the representation of the data according to your client uh, needs. So next step is the concept uh, step, which is one of the most important for most energy experts. Because at this point, you are going to do two things. You are going to design the, the measures that you want to, to implement in your, in your customer, and you are going to be defining the baseline that better fits the the building that you have or the devices that uh, that the customer has uh, typically this is something that uh, that you do with an excel file uh, and uh, a lot of hours of dedication to to from an excel file to come up with a formula that actually uh, explains the typical behavior of the of the device uh, in Dexma, we have this functionality, which is Automatic Baseline Calculator, ABC, that, uh, that is intended to, to simplify a lot this process and to, to make it much, much faster so that you, instead of reaching one client, you can reach many more clients. So uh, to use it, you just uh, select what is the device that you want to create the, the baseline for and which are the parameters that uh, you think that maybe have an influence on the on the behavior of the device. Just like that, calculate baseline and Dexma gives you a formula that is the baseline for your device. Uh, if you are kind of an expert user and you, are, you, you want to be sure that this formula fits well, um, we have uh, we provide uh, like uh, all the statistical information regarding the baseline for you to to make up your mind and see if this formula is okay for you or not. And if you want to to make changes to the formula and improve it with your knowledge, uh, you can do it and see if with the changes that you make, the, the formula improves or not. So it's both for basic users or for more advanced users. And that's it regarding creating the baseline. Now, with the baseline by itself, uh, the customer doesn't really have much information, right? So we need to, to be able to show the customer something that he actually understands. So um, what we do at this point, of course, it is to compare the baseline and your savings objective with the actual consumption of the, of the building, right? And with graphs like the ones that you see in the screen, 
um, I think that any user, uh, being it more expert or less expert, you can see the, they can see if the project is going well or not so good. If in screen it uh, it means that you are uh, you are achieving the savings objectives that you had, and if it's red, it means that you are over consuming, right? Uh, so. Uh, also, we know that it is very important to, for you to be able to see the accumulated savings, uh, right? You can be saving during one week or two, but you want to know that uh, until this moment, am I saving or not to have to have like the, the full picture for the the, the entire uh, period of the project. So the, the client, you can decide if you want the customer to be able to access this this screen index more or not depending on the, the level of access that it has but uh, if you prefer you can you can have you can send them automatic reports by email showing exactly the, the same information showing uh, um, showing like an overview of how each of their project is doing and they can quickly see see which ones are doing better and worse and then of course you can also send uh, a report with, with more detailed information like the ones that the one that we were seeing before and um, and okay other than the measurement and verification project and the automatic uh, baseline there are many other functionalities from Dexman that you can try to to explore to give even more added value to your to your customer for example we have the the forecasting functionality that uh, you can configure at once for all of your customers and all of the devices from your customers and will and will make a prediction of how much they will be consuming over the next months until the, the end of the year and so on uh, of course, you can set up all alerts. You can configure them the way you want uh, in, a, in a useful manner for the for the installation. And you can you can create very customizable reports with the kind of um, with the kind of information that you think it's useful for the customer. You can add the the baseline information in the report. You can have any kind of of a graph, you can add custom pictures and set it up the whatever way you you want. Uh, many other functionalities are available. Just uh, check up on our website to to get uh, more details. And that is it. Now we go to the Q and A section. Carol, do, do we have any you. questions? Thank you. Yeah. So thank you guys. Hopefully that uh, information was uh, was helpful. And uh, on this page here, you'll see, uh, or on this deck here, you'll see our contact information, okay? So we did get some questions in. Uh, so one of the ones that we picked out uh, is uh, typically what kind of saving potentials does the EMS have? And also what seems to be the cost associated with getting the system in place, okay? So we do see this question quite often, so this is why I wanted to have a chance to answer it. So basically, uh, this would really depend on a lot of different factors, of course, okay? So do feel free to get in contact with me. Uh, you have all the contact information right there, and we can discuss the specific case further, okay? But to give you an example of some average figures that we are seeing or average savings that we are seeing, basically we have a, a client of ours that is, uh, they're using close to 10 million in, in, in of electricity costs per year, okay, annually. And they've invested slightly over a hundred thousand dollars a year on uh, on getting the, the the system in place and, and getting the everything set up, <coughs> basically all associated costs. Excuse me. So this, uh, of course, includes all the associated costs, implementation, assessment, software, and so on. And uh, the savings that they're achieving through the EMS is uh, one over over one million per year. But they have gotten also close to two million. Okay. So it is quite uh, quite a lot of savings for the amount of the investment that's uh, that 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 is necessary. Okay. Uh, and uh, one other question we got. So as I mentioned, of course, guys, do get in contact with me if uh, if necessary. So you have the contact information there, so we can talk about the specific case, right? 
Um, one more question, let me see here. What other Dexma functionalities could benefit ESCOs? Sophia, do you want to take this one? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, well, let me go back. Uh, yeah, well, here um, where I was explaining some some other functionalities that uh, that any ESCO might uh, might take advantage of the forecasting alerts reports, but there are, there are many many others. Um, that you can you can check in the Exmo website and especially in the support page. I would maybe um, uh, highlight uh, Exmo Optimize, which is uh, which is kind of a new functionality. It's been it's been uh, available for one year or so, and I think it's it's really interesting and. Um, uh, because what it tries to do is to to see what is the what is the usual consumption of a device in an automatic way to uh, register the typical consumption of the device and then automatically lets you know when the when the device has a, a consumption that is completely out of the ordinary right it uses uh, an AI model. Uh, that uses the the word automatically uses the the weather information from the location. Uh, it uses the information of if it is a holiday or not. It uses all of this information in an automatic way and just lets you know okay something is happening here and you should take a look at it. It's like a much more advanced alerts, smart alerts, if you if you will. I think that's pretty cool to to check out. Yeah. Definitely. I just want to add with that as well uh, a case study. So basically, we worked with uh, with the retailer, basically a uh, shopping client or a shopping uh, like a retailer client that had a lot of different. Uh, I don't know if they were specifically freezers or fridges or something like that in in the stores located across uh, everywhere, and uh, they had a lot of faulty ones. So the the software was able to detect. Uh, which which one of those uh, locations was really causing quite a lot of the like you know weighing on their bills? We were able to achieve over thirty percent uh, savings or uh, thirty yeah thirty percent savings for this specific uh, end client with that uh, with the optimized portion of the software. So there is quite a lot of potential, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you guys can get in contact for specific cases, and we can uh, we can take a look. And uh, that's it from us. So thank you so much for taking the time today and joining the webinar. Hopefully you guys had some good uh, information and feel free to reach out at whichever point and uh, I'll be as prompt as possible to get back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.